Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my Flosstube channel. I'm happy to be here with you today. It's Monday, October 4th, 2021. It's been a while since I was able to film, so I'm very happy to show you all the things I've been working on, some finishes I have, some plans, and I have had quite a lot of changes in the last couple months. As many of you know, I did lose my mom on August 24th, and um, I have had a major health change as well, which I'll talk about more at the end of the video. But I did want to say at the beginning here, thank you for all of those of you that reached out and that left over 500 messages on Instagram and then sent all of these beautiful cards and sympathy notes, both from my friends from home and from my church and a lot of you as well, sometimes multiple cards. Um, I thank you so much for your kindness and your understanding. Many of you have gone through the same um, heartache of losing a parent. There's nothing quite like it, but um, I wanted to say thank you for your compassion and it made me feel so much more supported. So I, again, we'll talk more about it at the end. I won't be able to get through this if I don't, but I did want to show you all these cards and say thank you to start. I was able to finish four things while um, the last couple months have been going on. A lot of it more recently, but I do find stitching to be a solace and something that um, keeps my mind occupied. It has been hard not to pick up the phone and show my mom every time. So I kind of thought, well, it's good that I have this community in place to share. My family thinks that what I do is great and they'll say, oh, good job, mom, but they don't quite get it. So I'm so grateful that I have all of you to just cheer me on and appreciate what I do and, and be inspired and um, want to also make beautiful things for your home. It's such a joy to me. I, I had even debated about maybe not doing YouTube anymore just with how um, heartbroken I've been and I thought I can't do a video. And maybe I still can't, we'll see how this goes. But um, I was thinking, I heard a quote from my um, counselor podcaster that I listen to while I walk, and I'll link some of those below. I talk about Dr. Edie um, quite a bit, but she was saying a runner told her, or she read about a runner that said, God made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. And I think, you know, God made me creative. And I think a lot of you understand this thought to you. When, when you create, you feel his pleasure. So it's not something that I want to um, stop or um, even take a break from because it does give me joy and it does make me feel like I am um, fulfilling part of his purpose for me, <laughs> however that plays out. So um, let me start with some of my finishes and a chit chat. I had finished this one right before my birthday on August 31st, and it was um, intended to be for the Cross Stitch Camp challenge with Sherry, the Colorado Cross Stitcher. I'll link her channel below. Um, I used this purple silk around the um, rim of this jar and it was an XG design silk I got from a kit. I showed it in my last video in July 31st. So it really wasn't a huge undertaking as far as, oh, I'm gonna use this new silk, but I was happy to put it in there. It's a really pretty blue purple and I would recommend XG flosses for um, future use. It's very nice. I um, put this on a grayish green fabric, the same one I did my Sub Rosa sunflower on, and I almost wish it had been on black, but that just makes it a little bit more prim. I put it on this um, block that I got. This was the color of it originally, <laughs> a little too bright. It was 75% off or possibly even more. I know I paid about a $1.50 for this block. It had like a 
kind of a scene, a beach scene on it that wrapped around. I had to sand off some glitter, in fact, on these edges. But um, I just glued around some twine instead of doing ribbon because I had a lot of pattern going on on the front. And I used some of my sorry silk that I talk about all the time and an antique button. I'm not sure if that's celluloid or ivory, but it's really old and I love those buttons. I also had a little charm, if you can see that, from a brass um, set that I got online a long time ago. I can look that up if you're interested, but anyway, this was pretty simple to finish and pretty simple to stitch. I didn't have a whole lot of stitching while this was going on. In fact, I didn't quite have it completely finished before August 31st. I may have been missing like a leaf. I just kind of got stuck for a few days, but I enjoyed um, finishing that. This is like a um, just a craft paint from Hobby Lobby. I think it was a um, barn red. So that was a lot of fun and it goes really well with my Sub Rosa Sunflower um, finish that I put together last month and I will, or last video, two months now, and I'll insert a video of what that looks like here. Okay, the next finish I wanted to share with you is a little different direction. I stalled out on this project for almost a year. It was um, harder than I expected and, and then also not. This is Reverend Gordon Squash Bottom from Not Forgotten Farm. And this is not a punch needle pattern. It's actually cross stitch. Um, it's quite a bit of stitching that is big blocks of color. And I thought that it would be a lot easier to complete if I used punch needle. And so what I did was take the pattern, which is not very conducive to this. It's a lot of Not Forgotten Farm patterns are very small. Um, in fact, I believe I blew it up just a little bit on my copier and um, traced it on a window onto weaver's cloth, which is what you use to punch needle. I um, tried to find a thread that was in a large ball. I knew I had a lot of white space to fill in around the Reverend Gordon squash bottom and all the other elements. And I didn't want to be part of what I do not like about punch needle. And um, I wonder if this is part of what discourages some people. Threading the punch needle is a chore. <laughs> it's one of those things where you um, constantly, or I constantly lose the threader. It's very fine and long. In fact, part of why I had to go with this larger yarn is because I can't, find the threader to my larger um, punch needle um, that'll go to a finer finer uh, pile. It'll go to a smaller pile. My CTR, I can only get it to stay on three. So this is really puffier than I wanted, but it kind of comes down to, I. that's why I stalled for so long. I just wasn't super happy, but I'd committed so much to it already. I also forgot to mirror this image because you're writing it in mirror image <laughs> because you punch from the back. And so my 2021 initially went the wrong direction and it just made me so frustrated and it wasn't fall time anyway, so I put it away. But I kind of thought, okay, get over yourself, you can do it. <laughs> and I picked it back out. I love this frame that I found um, in my mom's stash. It actually was chalk painted white all over to the point where you could not see this beautiful hand carved detail. I think this frame must have been pretty expensive at some point. Someone, you know, went through the trouble to put that detail on there and then they completely covered it. So I painted this kind of a, a Java color like I do everything. And then I over um, waxed it and then I used a metallic just real lightly to kind of um, highlight that. It almost looks like stalks of wheat. And then um, this color was intending to match Reverend's jacket. Someone told me that this frame is too fine for a primitive folk art piece, and, and that's true, I agree. But my thought is, sometimes it's fun to, I think the word is juxtapose. You know, you have something very, very fine with something very primitive, or vice versa. So um, this piece, from a distance, I really like it. Up close, the yarn that I used from Hobby Lobby, although it was nice to have a continuous loop, it was a really large um, ball of yarn, it was too thick of a pile and so it's too shiny. It's not as primitive as I want, but I kind of had to move on and just say done is better than perfect. 
I want this on my wall and I love that I made the cat. Um, I think it's DMC 900, which is the color I use for my torty. Her name is Roxy. My other cat's technically my daughter's. So <laughs> I do a black and white cat from time to time, but this is my girl. And then, um, I put today's date or, you know, this year instead of, um, the 1800 date, for some reason, I like to have the date I actually finished something. I just used colors that I had. Some of them were Victorian motto and I actually ran out of the Victorian motto. You get 10 or 20 yards, 20 yards of Victorian motto in a skein. And maybe I had used some of it, but that just tells you how much thread this will take. This didn't even fit in my Morgan lap stand. I had to kind of fold it in there. Um, and I believe you're supposed to put a larger punch needle piece on a frame like you do for like needlepoint, but I don't have one of those. And I thought, I'll just be careful when I use my Morgan stand, I had to crunch part of this part that I'd already stitched. And the way I dealt with that was I just didn't leave it in there very long. I punched what I needed and I immediately released the hoop because I was afraid that it would, you know, pull out the punched needle um, or the punched section or that it would um, somehow crease it and not come out, but it was fine. You can actually use a larger piece than your Morgan stand will fit and it's okay. The punch needle is pretty sturdy. So this is Reverend Gordon Squash Bottom and he is finished and I just kind of have him popped here in the frame. I need to lace it better, but for now I just wanted to see how it fit and that was a challenge too. I initially didn't have it measured correctly with the fillet or I don't know what I did wrong. I had about half an inch at the bottom that was not punched. And so I had to go back in draw another line and then make some of these spikes a little bit bigger at the bottom. So this is kind of my take on Reverend Gordon. It's definitely not a absolute, you know, copy of the pattern, but I thought it was a lot of fun and a lot of y'all have stitched that. So if you want to try a punch needle in it, if you have any questions about it, just give me a, a message and I'll list my email below as well. Then my last finish, nope, I have two more. This big finish, and I may have gotten out of order because I've gotten distracted, was a big hit on Instagram. I've already posted it. I've had it up since my kids' costumes came in the mail. It was actually before October. I have worked on this throughout the year. A lot of you have followed along as I've stitched it, and um, I love the design. It's super fun and cutesy, I know, but it's uh, such a fun time in our household to do Halloween. We have a lot of parties and trick-or-treating and so I wanted this to celebrate that with my kids and I changed the dog to match my dog. I'll probably insert a video here maybe to the side so you can see this a little closer up because I can't get it close enough or <laughs> it's so tall it's gonna hit. I put this um, on the same thing I put my Christmas rules for um finish on. It was a decorative piece. I actually saw it in Priscilla's house once. I don't know if she still has it, but it used to have an iron grate on top of it. And my mom didn't want the wood behind. She just wanted the iron grate for where she was putting it. And so she gave me these panels. There were um, maybe five or six pickets and they're kind of rounded at the top. You can see they came with this finish already on them, which I love. It's very you know, kind of prim and antique. And then I did have to cut it apart. In fact, my husband helped me this time make it even more narrow than the Christmas rules. So I cut that, or my husband did this time, I did the first time, and um, have one more piece of this picket actually to put a whip on that I'm gonna show you later. The fabric I dyed myself. Um, it was a 28 count even weave from Hobby Lobby. I miss that we can't use the coupons anymore. It used to only be about $12 to get a yard of even weave, but now it's 20. But that's still a good price for a whole yard of fabric. And I think I used some orange and some gray. You can see a few little oopses. Um, I was hoping that my stitching would cover the little dye. Here they are right here. There are some little dye um, granules that weren't quite um, dissolved. I'm more careful about that now. You always have to have super hot water when you're putting your dye crystals in. It doesn't matter if you let it cool a little bit, but they have to initially dissolve or you're going to have them show up in weird ways that you can't even expect. There's also an orange one somewhere, but it wasn't too bad. I didn't have the buttons for this because I switched patterns for my Christmas rules 
for my friend Trinka's Halloween rules. Thank you, Trinka, by the way. And um, so there weren't any buttons in Included, but that was fine. I just had some little yellow black ones I got from Hobby Lobby and I had some from an eBay seller that I didn't know was included in my purchase on eBay. I got a whole bunch of Jabco buttons for a really good price. So I changed the moon there. It was supposed to be orange and I made it yellow and then the stars are orange. So that was, a, that was actually all buttons. I did do some specialty stitches just to keep it interesting as I went along. The bats are satin stitched. There's a triple cross stitch that I shown in an earlier uh, video instead of leaves I put purple triple crosses and just some simple little um, specialty stitches to make it my own and then the new part that I did was this curved mat at the top I used a plate to trace as close to this um, design as I could a compass would have been better but I didn't have one <laughs> so I just found some plates and eyeballed it and then finishing it I have a tutorial on um I'll link it below on one of my earlier videos it's actually one of my ABC um little house alphabet pieces the like the one back here behind me um I did this finish the exact same way so I debated about filming it but it's so large that it's hard to get in the camera frame anyway and I show it in the last tutorial I did, it's the exact same process except for the curve, but really it doesn't look that different. I went a lot slower um, doing this because the curve was something new and I, I got my um, checks just a little bit stretched. You have to be really careful. This was actually just hot glued on, but I pulled it so tight that I, I warped the fabric just a little bit. So just note to self, if you're using homespun on a large piece like this, I don't have as many problems with a smaller one, but on a large one, really watch that you're not letting it warp um, by pulling it too tightly, too snug. So that's my Halloween rules. The bow at the top, um, I used a pig from Hobby Lobby. This is some sorry silk in one of my favorite colors, <laughs> kind of a mustard. And then some old ribbon that I had left over from, I think that wreath back there. I had thought, oh, I'm never going to use this, but then it worked out perfectly with this fabric. So my bows also are demonstrated in that um, tutorial about my ABCs. I don't do a perfect bow like, um, I know Christy Java Girl Stitches makes beautifully, perfectly symmetrical bows. Mine is more of a funky bow. <laughs> and so I just wad all the ribbon together and tie a twine around it and then press it out. I like to use wired ribbon. This is not wired, but it was a nice color. The um, wired ribbon is just miles easier to use. So any questions about that, please let me know. Um, I am passing that pattern on. I have all the pieces. I was gonna show you. I'm sharing this with my friend Helen. She's gonna share one of hers, no rush again, but I may have to uh, purchase a new <laughs> Pattern eight, I think it's the last one, uh, or six, because there's two per pattern. Dahlia uh, got a hold of that when she was a puppy. It didn't affect the um, stitching, but mm. anyway. The other finish I had, and I do believe this is my last fully finished. I have one more finish after this, but it's an, an embroidery piece. This applique piece I showed um, partially on Instagram. I absolutely love, this is so fun. I had this pattern from Lakeview Primitives a couple of years. I bought it before I had even attempted any wool applique. Um, I wasn't sure I could do it. It's quite a bit larger in the pattern. I think this is like a 21 inch um, circle of wool. So that's a lot of wool. Um, that was part of what intimidated me. It took me a while to collect a piece of yellow wool large enough and I did have it but um I've also discovered that Dahlia loves to chew wool and so I thought I am not gonna put a wool mat on my coffee table only to find Dahlia chewing it which is what happened to the last um applique project it's not completely destroyed don't despair but I do have to redo some of the flowers on it so um I'm looking at it right now that um kind of inspired me to make this smaller on my copier I think I reduced it by about 25% is all maybe maybe more it might have been 50% I can't remember the exact um, dimensions but I found this stand which I loved on Farmer's Attic one of my favorite Etsy stores with Lucy as the owner there she does a great job 
and I thought it was the cutest thing. And when I went to actually buy it when I had the money, it was sold out. So I put it on a um, notify me when it comes in stock. There's a company that makes it. They have an entire series of round, like monthly pieces that you can put on it. And I do intend to continue on with that. Um, in fact, I think you can buy the kit with all the wool and everything for about $35, which is a little bit pricey, but um, the pattern's only like 10. So anyway, this isn't intended to go on here. Obviously this penny paws pattern is intended to be a full 21 inch tablecloth, but, um, or table topper. But I reduced the number of cats from six to four. And I, again, used a plate to find a size that was um, appropriate for this stand. And this will get it out of Dahlia's reach where I'm gonna put it. <laughs> It'll be nice and high. And it's just so quirky and fun. I loved it the minute I saw it on eBay, even though I thought, I'm not even sure I can do this, but I have to buy this. I'm not sure you can still find it there. Um, just do a search for Lakeview Primitives Penny Paws and see if you can find it. I am going to save the pattern because I might make the larger one at some point. This is just too cute. And I might do it next time in different colored cats instead of just the black. But this is kind of a Halloween finish. I did add this bow and I might put something in the middle here. Maybe a pumpkin, but I haven't decided. So thank you for letting me share those fully finished objects with you. I had a lot of fun um, creating them and, you know, they're not perfect. <laughs> I definitely had made some mistakes um, with this piece and with um, my Reverend Squash Bottom. It was, you know, just something I had to figure out as I went, but it was fun and it was um, a learning experience. So I encourage you to give it a try. If you haven't tried wool applique, it's a lot of fun. So let me get out the last finish. I'm pretty sure Dolly's asleep. I'm gonna set this wool applique here. But if she hops over, I might move real fast. You'll see it. Um, the last thing I finished completely, well, not completely, completely, but the last pattern I sewed was this chestnut junction. And I don't remember what it's called. It might be like kitty on a bench or something. Oops, I just lost the bag. But it's a, um, just image that you can put on anything. I could frame this if I wanted, um, but this is a tea towel from Hobby Lobby that I intended to make into a large pillow. And what I thought I would do is back it with these fabrics here. This is a French general piece, a fat quarter, and then I have this um, orange check. So I was kind of do an envelope style and I hoped to have this done, but I just ran out of time. I also did this one last year, which you've already seen, and I colored it with Crayola um, crayons. And I'll do that with this cat as well. It's probably gonna be a black cat. So I have this one here, um, which is the, the crow and the sunflower. And then I have the cat with the pumpkins. So these will be two pillows. Unfortunately, last year I did not have a dog that destroys every fabric um, that comes into her contact. Hopefully she'll grow out of that. Um, so I'm not sure I'll put them out this year anyway, but they're ready to go. And I enjoy having a box of Halloween and fall pieces that I just get a good start on. Um, maybe it's, you know, 75% done and I feel a little bit discouraged that I didn't get it done in time. But then when the next year comes around, it's only, you know, maybe an hour or two of work and you have a new um, piece. So it's part of the consistency and perseverance of our craft where we just keep, just keep stitching, just keep sewing, just keep punching. <laughs> All of those starts, I think, except for the honey jar, um, which was a camp challenge work done last year or in June. Yeah, I started actually Halloween last year. So it takes time, but you do reap the reward. So it's worth it. I had a couple of, not a couple, I have a lot of whips to show. So let me get those out and I'll try to be quicker and I'll be right back. Because I've been gone for two months, I have lots of whips that I've worked on. I'll try to move through them quickly so I don't spend too much time. But I had a new start yesterday, actually, kind of as a reward for finishing Halloween rules and also because I knew it wouldn't take very long. This is Scary Berry by Erica Michaels. I know Helen D recently finished that. She's been doing lots of berries 
and I love the berries. So this was my start. It's very small. There's the tree and the pumpkins, but literally this is almost half of the bottom. So it's not very big. And I really love this fabric. I dyed this myself last year. I'd forgotten about it. It was um, denim and charcoal. And I think it's super spooky. So it's going to have the moon show up really well. I think this fabric might be even darker, but I'm not sure. I thought it looked very spooky and very much like a Halloween night. So there's Scary Berry. And then this one was something I started last year. And it's become a car project because it's on... Um, 11 count. I don't know what this fabric is called. I don't think it's the the same that you use for um, the Prairie School or some of them, but it might be. It's something Christine got me from Hollis Hands and it's almost like stitching on a window screen. It's very, very, um, what's the word you can see through? But it's super fun and easy. So in the car, I don't have to worry about magnification, obviously, or any problems like that and I love this design it says trick-or-treat smell my feet this used to be kind of hard to find I got this one on eBay this is just my working copy um, but I believe fat quarter shop sells it so this is what's gonna go on the single picket that I have left over I wanted it to be super long and big because I had a different piece of wood I was gonna put it on but actually this picket will match um, Halloween rules very nicely so that's what I'm gonna use and again, I'm using the same floss from my Halloween rolls. I just kind of have a Halloween uh, bundle of flosses and they all work together. The other um, piece I haven't shown you in a while is Though He Seemeth Sleeping. I'm doing a sale with my friend Becky and Rachel. I'll list their channels below from Socks for Mum and Stitch and Be Well. And Rachel posted on the website this morning or maybe a couple days ago, how hers is an autumn uh, color way and it's very pretty. I'm sort of sticking to the, the colors and the pattern. A lot of the called for, um, not all of them are the, um, I didn't go all gentle arts or all classic color works. I've mixed a lot of them in, but I hadn't done that top row of text or that motif at the side. I hadn't gone up, gone up the sides as far. I'm going to be doing the row of leaves. I think that comes after one more line of text. So up here is the, the row of leaves and then the alphabet. So it's not a huge sampler. I don't think I'll concentrate it on it as much this year, but I do think it's one you could do if you focused in a month or so. So I love this fabric choice. It's a Victorian model. It just says cream. 32 count and I'm using two strands of floss. It's going to be a little bit more graphic maybe than some, but I think it's just a really pretty color palette and it goes with my home very nicely. So there is, here it is. Here's the threads. There's a lot of them, a lot of different colors. I love that campfire floss. I believe that's by, um, classic color works. Yeah, that's my favorite one. So that is going to be what it says, Christ the boat is keeping. I was so happy to have caught that video. My mom didn't realize that I was videoing her and my son. At the end of my last video, I inserted the um, Bible reading they did, just kind of impromptu, not anything to do with the sampler. It started to storm and Elijah was afraid. And so my mom pulled that verse out that has the same um, story from the sampler. And I'm so happy that I filmed that because I've rewatched it quite a bit. I don't have my mom on my YouTube channel at all except for that. So that was um, something I was grateful for. I did a little more work on Hawker and Hollow. Um, none of this was completed the last time I showed you, maybe back in July. So I've mostly done this in August. I haven't picked this back up again in a while because I'll show you the whip that is taking all of my attention right now. After I finish that whip, I'll get back on track with Hawker and Hollow, but this is block eight for me. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. So I'm definitely feeling some momentum on this. When I get that block done, I'll just have four to go and I hope to kind of ramp up a little bit, but I have another whip that's got my heart right now. So I do love this though, 36 count. Um, vintage country mocha sorry I'm a little bit rusty with two strands of floss which I am so happy that I did I think it makes it look so just impactful 
it's not as vintage looking, but it's, it's definitely folk art and almost autumnal. So, so pretty. Want to get back to that. I hadn't realized I hadn't shown you that whole block. So I did go ahead and pull out that, that blacksmith block. There's that one. I started this little freebie last year. I don't think I ever showed you on my channel. It was just on a whim. I wanted an acorn to go with this squirrel. I'll probably put that at the beginning of the video. Um, I wanted some squirrels and acorns in the front entry there. And so this is such a pretty freebie. It's on the Work Baskets webpage. I think it's just called Quaker or Acorn. She does a lot of, or I guess there's two designers that did these. They do a lot of like Quaker animals and Quaker crows. Um, lots of very pretty designs, but isn't that cute? It's supposed to be done in one color. I'm doing it in two. And I kind of ran into a snag because I hand dyed this brownie. Let's see. It's brown black, really. I used that on my Brenda Gervais piece. And I thought there was plenty left, but I've almost run out. And I didn't write down what it was that I over dyed. I don't think I could even repeat it anyway. I just took black dye on top of a brown DMC and painted it with a paintbrush. It's got great variegation. It totally looks like it could have been a week, or a Gentle Arts, but um, of course it's a one of a kind. So now I'm in a little bit of a pickle, but I think I'll just take this into Hobby Lobby and find a solid brown. And I tried to make it evenly dispersed so that it wouldn't be quite so obvious that I had changed colors. I think if you kind of have some mindfulness about where you place it, it'll be okay. And then this is just a plain DMC. I don't have the color right here, but it's just another brown. And then, um, sorry, I've got some hair in my face. This was not pos not, not quite finished for this year. Probably I'm kind of moving on to Halloween. So, and then this Ada was just a piece I grunged up with, it looks like writ, probably tan, maybe some dark brown. I did it a while ago and it was just a scrap of Ada. So it was bigger than I thought. And I, I have a frame that's five by five. It's copper with acorn leaves on it. It'll be really, with acorns and leaves in like a metal, it'll be really pretty in there. I think that's why I pulled it out initially was I was looking for something that was five by five. So that's a freebie. Um, I have a lot of other freebies to show you later. And I had meant to mention, I never have, Celeste and I from Celeste Creates made a Pinterest board together quite a while ago, maybe earlier this year. And um, I will link that below. She's put several beautiful sampler freebies on there and I've got lots of seasonal freebies. So if you wanna check out Celeste and I's collaboration there on our Pinterest board, I encourage you to do that. I believe that pattern is, is there. So if you wanna check it out. I also worked, because I was just in the mood for some Christmas pieces, I worked on my Barbara Anna Santa, the Dove and the Key. I love this pattern, it's not very large. I had a little bit of issue with my fabric because I'm changing it from the called for, I'm not sure what that is exactly, it looks kind of like a vintage country mocha. I'm doing it on Witchell Sea Lily, which, at the time really fit this room. Um, as you can see, I've, I've redecorated a lot of this space, a new rug and a new um, entryway table or dresser. It used to be grays and blues and now I've moved more to brown. So that's okay. It's still really pretty and I love the white contrast on that sea lily. Santa wasn't finished and I actually pulled that wing out because I didn't like what I had done. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted there. My husband had a quick question. Um, this, like I said, is a favorite. I'm using white dinky dye silk. It's called natural actually, but it's very white and the snow is turning out great. So I um, have the house to do still and I will continue to work on that probably after I finish um, a few fall things. So I'm kind of through the month of October continuing with fall and then it'll be all Christmas. So the last... Um, stitching whip I have because I have a couple of soft things that I'm making I wanted to show you kind of in progress before I show you my last whip that's almost done um this is almost done too this is Prairie Seasons by Prairie Schooler and um I love the way this is turning out I have this really cool variegated thread from Threadworks it's new oh and I don't have it do I Yes, I do. It's new. It's um, called Shanghai Nights. 
I don't know why it's called that. <laughs> um, it looks like a very autumnal kind of variegated leaf to me. It does have some charcoaly green and some brown and some um, kind of maroon. I think it's so cool. It's 20 yards. So there's some other autumn plans that I have for that. But if you want to get, you know, a big thread works, um, is it 20 yards or 10? It might be 10. Yeah, it's 10 yards. You could definitely do a nice monochrome piece with that. And you can see how it variegates here at the top, the autumn. I think it was called for in the brown, but I like that much better. And then the leaves, I'm doing the bottom half in one thread and then the top in the variegated, unless I run out and then I just kind of stop and pick up another thread. I think it's looking really fun, more like an actual leaf. I have a cornucopia to fill in here. I have to put a bunch of leaves here and then some corn. So the barn is Weeks Crimson, I believe. It's called for, a, I think, a brown, and I wanted it to be red. And then my squirrel, I blended the brown that's called for with the pumpkin orange that's called for because squirrels in Kansas are not gray. That's what's actually charted. I had not seen a gray squirrel other than, you know, Rocky and Bullwinkle <laughs> until I went to California when I was 19 years old. So I was like, I didn't know squirrels could actually be that color. My squirrels are this color <laughs> where I live. So I love that little orange guy. He's that nice tweeted or blended thread. And then I actually used that thread over here too to just kind of, because it was a new color that was introduced, I wanted it to kind of show up in a few leaves so that it's balanced. But this goes on my red little door that I have my spring and summer. I'm very happy to be moving forward with this project that's been sort of stalled for a long time because there's other monthly series that I want to do or other seasonal series that I want to do. So that one is almost done. One that still needs some work but is farther along than you might think. This scarecrow I made last year. Sorry if it's glittery. I don't want to take out all the pieces. Here's all the arms and legs and this is part of why I wanted to show it just, just to let you know it's not hard to make these little um, you know soft critters that I make. They're really pretty simple, just a muslin form. I always buy a pattern because I don't want to copy and not give credit to the um, designers. But when you start out, you just kind of antique all of these different pieces. There's some shoes. There's a crow in here that's all sewn in. And so I um, sold my scarecrow last time to Tina from Stitching with my bestie. Hi, Tina, if you're watching. I hope you're still enjoying him. And so this one I might make to have a pumpkin head. I haven't decided because I really do like pumpkin head people. And so he might have an orange face, but still with that, I don't like a lot of scarecrow faces, but this guy is more of like a raggedy Andy. And so I think that's going to make a cute pumpkin face. We'll see. I haven't decided. And that I hope to show you next time. This one um, is not the same colors here. I made this little Raggedy Ann in July with um, 4th of July, like patriotic colors, but now I'm making her a little bit smaller. I actually had sewn this up at the same time and thought it was too small, but changed my mind. Here she is without her arms. <laughs> she has her legs, but um, she is gonna be a little witch with these black and white colors. I have to sew up a hat. I actually had done another hat so I can find it. And then her hair is gonna be purple wool. <laughs> I thought that would be so cute. So this little witch, um, and she might be holding a frog. I'm not sure, probably not. I think she'll maybe have a broom or something, but this little witch I hope to show you soon. And I will try to link these patterns. This is a chestnut junction one. And this one, I believe is another company that I've not used before, but I'll try to link both of these patterns. And if you want to see this finished, I did show it in, um, it might have been 2019. I think it was 2019 in my fall video. I'll try to link that below as well. And then my patriotic one is in July of this year. So those two were fun. And then, um, or they will be, they're going to be a fun finish. And then my final... And I had hoped to have this done, but there was still quite a bit to do. My all creatures, great and small, a lot of you have been cheering me on and several of you have stitched this as well, is so close to being done. I have poured myself into this pattern. There are so many details. This is on 40 count. So it's even more stitching than it looks like. To me, I always feel like 
maybe I should have done it on 28, then it would be like a poster. But, you know, as I keep stitching, I am going to eventually need to have smaller pieces. This one, though, is so detailed, and I love it. The um, floss I'm using is the Anchor, called for, except for the barn and the flowers. Anywhere that had that pink, that was the barn, I turned it into a um, crimson, which is kind of a, um, actually dark cranberry, it's called. A little bit of a pink tone to it, but it's mostly dark red, and that's Anchor 20. So instead of the pink barn, and that ended up being in more places than I realized at first. It has uh, flowers that are that dark red, the man's shirt, the whole border has pieces of red through it. So that made me happy anyway. I'd much rather have red than pink. There is pink in here, but it's much more of a minor color and it's more of a mauve. Anchor has some interesting tones of floss that I don't think DMC does. It's just a little bit different. The heel um, had a little bit of an issue here. I think I would be closer to finishing it, but I had to rip out a ram that was in the wrong spot. He was really too far up. And so it's one of those things where if you base one motif off of the wrong motif, then everything is off. My bird's in the wrong place. My <laughs> sheep was in the wrong place. I was like, so I just left the sheep. He's supposed to be sitting on the back of the ram, but it's fine. There's other birds on there that aren't. And then um, I had to move, I had to pull out one motif, but it's okay. There's a little pond with a fish that still needs to be filled in. And then it's just green, 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 which doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. The leaves do bother me a little bit. They are very tedious. It takes me almost, you know, 20, 30 minutes just to do a length of thread. Maybe not that long, maybe like 20 minutes to do just three leaves. But look how many leaves there are. <laughs> so figure 20 minutes for three leaves, 15 minutes for three leaves. That means hours and hours of leaves. And so the last section I have, I've started that building. There's a horse going in. And then I still have to do Adam and Eve, but I did go ahead and put the date and my initials because I was claiming that. <laughs> and I was also so excited. Let me see if I can reach it. I found this frame in my stash and I'll insert a picture here. This looks like a good screen grab, right? <laughs> I'll insert a picture here. This frame was chalk white. And again, I like chalk white for frames, but somehow I think it obscures the details. Look how beautiful this frame is. And it's not a, you know, shallow frame. It's meant for artwork. It's deep. It's probably pretty old. I got it at an antique mall. And I think I paid $12 for it, maybe 15, but no more than that. So the thought that I have this perfect frame for all creatures, great and small, just felt like a God smile because I thought, how am I gonna afford to frame this? I really don't know what I'm gonna do. And uh, I second what Celeste was saying in her most recent video, you can frame your own pieces. You totally can. Don't let that keep you from displaying your beautiful work. Um, sometimes you have to do a little adjusting. I'm looking at my um, Stacy Nash piece right there. I couldn't put the bottom flower border on that piece to fit that beautiful antique frame my mom gave me. But um, this time it just worked out perfectly. I do go around though and I'll, when I'm getting close to a finish, I'll put different frames on top of the artwork and see, or my stitching and see, can I add another row here? I know Lori does that too from Lori Holt. Can I add another row here to make this fit? Can I delete a uh, part of the border to make this fit? It makes it so worthwhile to me versus spending, you know, eighty, a hundred dollars um, on a frame, probably more for some, uh, to just use what you have and find things at thrift stores. I have a frame over there for Sally Spencer too that I found that I'm really excited about. Um, I didn't get a lot of work done on her this time, but I will be focusing on the finish for her this year as well. And this All Creatures Great and Small was a um, contract piece with my guild. We have a annual good intentions contract. It's called Magic because it's my annual good intentions. And you sign this contract saying you intend to finish these pieces. If you do, you're entered into a drawing. And um, the more you finish, if you finish all of the ones you said, some people have as many as 10. I put in four 
um, but all creatures is pretty large. So I'll be very happy if I meet that goal. That was all of the things I worked on that had any kind of um, progress. There may have been a couple little starts I did that just have a few stitches in them and Sally didn't get much. Um, but that is all I have. I have some um, of whips. I have some haul and things that I wanted to share that would be interesting to finish on. I had some gifts. One that is just Two, they're just amazing. Some amazing gifts to share. And then I think I'll have to do a separate video on my tote extravaganza, like Stephanie was um, sharing. I have a whole tote full of fall and Halloween finishes from previous years. So I think I'll make that a separate video. I'll probably release that in the next couple days or maybe even in the next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. But let me put all this up and I'll be right back. Okay, that was a lot of putting up my back. I had a couple of pieces I wanted to share that would make good finishes. One I thrifted and one is still, I hope, available at Dollar General if you're interested. And then I have a giveaway from a sweet subscriber and new friend um, to share as well. And I have some floss that um, I wanted to share. I'm not ready for that giveaway yet, but I will be giving that away. Oh, and I got a new planner. So the first thing I'll show you um, will start with the Dollar General piece. It's right here. This I found, um, like I said, at Dollar General, I got it for $6 because it's damaged, but it won't actually matter. I'm going to be putting, I think, a Halloween Quaker piece on here. I am always a sucker for a um, kind of gothic arch like that. And I love that it's a tabletop stand piece. So I'm probably going to stain this, um, my Java stain so that I can put, um, the Christmas Quaker on there as well. I'll try to insert a piece, uh, a picture of those patterns. I couldn't find it. I just printed it yesterday and it's in a pile, but, um, the fat quarter shop has the Christmas and Halloween Quaker piece as a freebie. So it's really pretty. And, um, I think are cute. It's mostly cute, but I think it'll look really nice on this piece and I'll probably switch out pieces. This of course will be covered, but I think it looks cute like it is already. The other one I found, I was inspired by our good friend Ginger Scholl. We all love her um, Instagram. She puts her word plays on this plaque. I'm almost positive. Ginger, let me know if I'm wrong. It, um, I think she said she got it from Hobby Lobby and I had bought a black and white check tin for the word plays by Brenda Gervais but I always felt like it was just a little bit too graphic you know just that bright white and black and this is much more antique I think I paid three dollars for it and it's funny I haven't ever seen it before but as soon as I saw it I was like that's Ginger's plaque <laughs> so I picked it up and I found another one the next day or it was a little longer maybe in the next week at a different thrift store so I was like awesome <laughs> apparently these are not completely um, hard to find, but definitely just a, a Hobby Lobby tray that I'm going to be putting the word plays in. But again, I have seasonal pieces to finish before I start the word plays. And then my planner, I wanted to share with y'all because I'm um, just kind of a sucker for this artist, Kelly Ray Roberts. I have been a fan of for probably 20 years least 15. It's been a long time. I even have her book and I've done some paintings like this. It's super fun. Um, and I hadn't seen one of these planners before. It's on Amazon for $11 and I've been needing a planner for 2022 because I've been making lots of doctor's appointments and things. And then my women's ministry team is meeting to plan next year. And so I was like, I don't have anywhere to put all these dates. I could do it in my phone, but I'm much more of a visual person. So this is a beautiful planner. I wanted to show it to you because it's hard to tell sometimes online. It's very small it's like five by seven but it's perfect for your purse and it has that strap so I'll try to link this below if you like Kelly Ray Roberts and my mom had gotten me this bag I thought that would be pretty to go together kind of a um, planner little pouch so if you're a planner nerd like I am that is a good one you never know what you're getting sometimes when you order like I hope this isn't flimsy or cheap and that is not um, let me move on. Oh, there's one other thing. This linen, I was bemoaning the fact that you can't use your coupon anymore at Hobby Lobby, but you can at Michael's. And I went ahead and picked up this even weave tea dyed 
Lugana. I haven't seen it before, so I wanted to show you because I bought some Irish linen from Michaels one time that was very much like a window screen. My needle would fall right through. It was just not my favorite. And this is much more even, um, appearingly, <laughs> or it's, it looks like it, it still says Irish linen, but it's an even weave. So just wanted to show you that I'm going to be doing some Christmas pieces on this. And if you have coupons like I do that come through your mail, 40% off, I think I only paid like four or $5 for that big fat quarter. So that's a nice deal. Um, and now let me show you the three amazing gifts I got as a, um, just blessing over and beyond and beyond. I hardly ever win anything. Um, I think most people say that some people don't. Jenny, I think of you long dog teacher always seems to win stuff, <laughs> but, um, I feel like I hardly ever do. And my guild had announced they were doing, um, in the Tudor Rose sampler guild, me and about 200 other people, um, that they were going to be, or just giving away some beautiful patterns from a fellow guild member who was sharing them just to be kind. And, um, I, I can't usually afford things like this from um, traditional stitches, I believe, put this kit together. The Blackbird Designs, um, What Remains. And it says, What Remains is Love. I won this two days after my mom passed away. I just couldn't help but think that it was um, not an accident. Out of over 200 people, um, my name was drawn. And uh, it's got some beautiful straw linen, all the, all the flosses. And um, it's just such a appropriate message. I'm getting so much glare here. Let me show you. I, I know a lot of you have seen this before, and a lot of people have already finished it. I think it came out in the summer, but I'm not. Um, I haven't found out the lady's name who donated this yet. I need to get her address if she'll share it. Her name is Grace, and um, I just thought it was a very gracious thing to do to share that um, pattern and that fabric and floss. It's just very um, much a blessing to me and just almost a message that, um, I don't know, just a God smile. So there's that. And then um, from my viewer and sweet friend, I got a, no, nope, that, that one, this one. I got a beautiful sympathy card, um, an encouragement note. I love that bird from, um, let's see, I have to have my glasses, sorry, from Kathy and um, Piper, is that right? Oh goodness. Cap Kathy and Piper Firth, um, had shared this scissor, um, what's it called? A scissor keep from, uh, just a beautiful handmade scissor holder. That's what it is that, um, her husband had made in the shape of a bee skip. You know, I love bees. And I don't have anything like this. It's so handy. I think you could even fit a couple pairs of scissors in here. But this is the fob my daughter made me when I started my moon lady. And um, these are some cat scissors. So I just think this is gorgeous. It's so well made and hand done. Um, and it's made out of oak. Um, the sweetest thing, though, is she had shared, she and her husband, want to give away one of these scissor holders to you. So um, if you would like to have a scissor holder like this, which you wouldn't, um, please put um, the word B in the bottom, B-E-E, -E, and answer a question. What should I have you ask or what should I have you answer? Um, tell me what your favorite piece that you're stitching for fall is. That's my favorite time of year to stitch. So let me know what your favorite fall piece that you're stitching is and mention the word B somewhere in your comment. And I will do a random comment generator and let Kathy and I, looks like Piper. I thought it was Peter. I'm sorry if I'm reading that wrong. Looks like Piper. Um, but I will let Kathy know. Um, your address and she'll send that out. So thank you so much, Kathy. That came at such a, a wonderful time for, um, just encouragement and your note was so thoughtful and, and sweet. Thank you so much. As well as Frankie, she sent me another, um, beautiful set of flosses. And like I said, I promise I will get that together. I'm going to put a whole bundle of these wicked stepmother flosses together. I enjoy them so much. They're very fun to stitch with and great, um, dyeing that she's done. I, I see one in here that's like a variegated fall. 
Um, well, I can't quite get it out, but lots of, of beautiful colors in there. So thank you so much, Frankie. You just spoiled me. You continue to be so thoughtful, and that means a lot to me. I think that's all for my haul. It's not really haul as much as it is just some gifts and some things I wanted to share with you if you are looking to finish some items. Um, and I think I will save my... Um, possible starts for, I am getting so blind when I put my glasses up on my head, I can't even see the camera. <laughs> um, I think I will save my possibilities and plans that I had for another segment or another video even, um, just to show you some fun. I said I had a lot of freebies to share and I do, they're all in a bag here, but I'm running out of time and I think I've talked long enough. So I might put a few photos of my mom at the end, just as kind of a tribute. I, I could fill an entire hour. Um, probably there was a beautiful slideshow that we saw um, at her funeral that I helped put together and it played You Are My Sunshine, which had my son just wailing. Um, we debated on whether he was old enough to come um, but it seemed like important for them to have closure that grandma was really gone. And so um, there's just so many memories that um, are something we can share and that we can remember. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that God was merciful to spare her from the pain and the suffering. So that's really all I can say without breaking down. But again, thank you so much for your friendship and your um, checking on me and continuing to watch and support my channel. If you would be so kind, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button and um, leaving a comment, that helps my channel out a lot. And remember, if you want um, a chance at winning the B Skep uh, scissor holder, just say the word B in your comment and let me know your favorite fall stitch. And as I end all of my videos in Psalm 90, verse 17, it says, May the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. I hope to have lots more videos coming for, um, toward you soon. So I hope to talk with you again soon. Take care.